pyramid. Theme of this video is pyramid. When I say this is a cult, they did not want me to leave. <laughs> they were like, you're not leaving the house all weekend. You're going to the convention, you're staying with us, and you're coming back to the Airbnb so we can trade and study together. To the moon, sheesh. Hi, welcome to Chisholm Prism. My name is Taylor Chisholm, and today in this video, I'm bringing you my personal horror story of being in a Forex crypto cult. I'm gonna call it a cult because that's what it was that I was brainwashed I was in this mode not even realizing it and to this day I now reflect on the time that I was in it don't recognize myself <laughs> and I really do see the magnitude and insanity of what I was a part of I got all the proof and we're just gonna dig into it today I'm here to warn you to stop chasing fast money it's not worth it I'm not perfect to this day but like there's so many scams out there. It's not even just this that I'm talking about. Like, people are always out there trying to promise some false lifestyle, false results. I got me a glass of wine today because I am reliving some trauma from my past and she's gonna get me through it. <laughs> Kick back, relax, let me tell you this horror story. We have Miss Susan. She's coming out because it's nighttime. She wants to get down. Oh, or she wants to stay. Okay, I'll have a cat in my lap today. First things first, what I was in, I was in that I Am Academy. Maybe you heard of this, maybe you didn't hear of this. This is very popular. If you look on YouTube, I Am Academy, you see people going and ranting about this. I'm so passionate about telling my story about this because I was in it three years ago. This time of year too, fall, because I recently saw a documentary about I Am Academy and these pyramid schemes and it just brought back a lot of memories from my time being in it and actually like committing, recruiting, going to conventions, spending a more money than I should have been there. I thought we were going to the moon, right? That was <laughs> The whole premise, they trick your mind and influence you to believe that it is what it isn't. So that's scary to believe that people to this day are still in I Am Academy. Like you can go to their website and you can still sign up for products and programs. It's probably not as big as when I was in it, of course, because I think COVID was the peak because so many people were at home. Maybe you had a little extra money from like some stimulus checks and you were trying to hustle it and figure out how you're gonna make some more money. I did get me a remote job at the time. I was working at an advertising agency but I hated the nine to five grind. I still do. I actually made a video on my channel about actually leaving my nine to five job and I'm now taking realistic steps to set up actual income streams that aren't the fake trading and fast money stuff because I think that's the most genuine way. It's a slow trail. That's where I am right now, but at the time, I was in this nine to five gig. I was looking for a quick fix. So let's break down like what is I Am Academy? Again, it's still going today. It's founded by a guy named Chris Terry and his wife, I believe it's Ice, Isis Terry, okay? It's the two of them and they kinda are the, the mascots of the whole show, right? So they wear very flashy clothes, jumpsuits. They created it in 2013. Ever since then, it's slowly been growing. Peaked, I think, in COVID when I was joining. A little bit about the things that they offer. So they would teach um, business, they teach real estate, they teach social media um, strategy, they teach e-commerce markets, digital currency. So what I was falling into was the digital currency side with Forex trading. But towards the end of the video, I'm gonna actually dig deep into why this is such a culty, manipulative company and things to look out for. And Chris Terry is shady for what he is doing to people. Let's talk about how this started for me, how I get into it and what it entailed. So how I got recruited and often, I think a lot of people got recruited in this way where I saw a girl on TikTok, I messaged her, she was just flashy. It's all about the lifestyle, right? So when you see someone and they're flashy and they got wads of money or buy nice cars, they have nice clothes, like they look like they have it together. And often you'd see a lot of young people who would 
just be flexing. I saw this girl and she was telling how she was making a lot of money with trading. And at the time, okay, like crypto was going off. Like that was huge. NFTs, like people were talking about all this stuff and I myself was like, hey, I just made a Robin Hood account. Right. Let me get into this and figure out how I can make this my full-time job, which I think often a lot of people get into it thinking like, this is the route to success. Like I'm gonna be that percentage that blows off from this. But little do you know, they're lying to your face and it's a more sinister structure. I reach out to the girl, she connects with me. She's like, hey, yeah, I got this business. I'm in this group, you should join. Last thing I know, I'm joining, signing up for this program. This thing isn't cheap. It's like 250 a month about that. This program is a lot. And at the time, so I had my full-time job, so I could afford it. But I knew a lot of people in the group that I was in who were struggling. They came from an unfortunate situation or they didn't have a job or they didn't have a place to live and they were paying this every single month just to be in this program but that's how they get you because they promise that like you'll make the money back um it's so easy we'll set it up like don't you worry about that just yet like it's gonna be fine in their mind and why this system is a pyramid pyramid theme of this video is pyramid as they push you get two people you don't have to pay for the service anymore and if you get those two people you recruited to recruit two more people then you start getting paid and that's where the money comes in that's where the real money comes in and honestly like there were people who were stacking majority of people thinking that they're just trading a bunch and making the money from trading when no they're recruiting a team who are paying into the program and that's where their money comes from. So it's all a facade and you would just be enamored in this group and they would really enforce like we are a family, we stick together. Cause of course they don't want you to leave. If you leave, a leg gets kicked out from under the table and they gotta build it up again. Cause someone ain't getting paid. That, that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't take much for the whole system to crumble if one leader leaves with all of their recruiters and the system falls. It was actually a pretty fragile system. And surprising actually, the girl who recruited me, she was living in a house with other recruiters. This definitely gives me the vibe of like TikTok houses where like people just bunk up to do TikTok dances. <laughs> it was like that equivalent, but to like a crypto cult group who was dedicated to trading and recruiting a bunch of people. And at the time I had like blue hair. Um, I was pretty spunky and out there, I think. And people, I think they were gravitating towards me because they're like, this girl got style. And in this world, how you look is very important. Like your aesthetic, they, they were really pushing me to like do social media market yourself make videos like you got to put yourself out there and tell more people to get into the group like hustling to get me to recruit more but I, at the same time in my head i did not want to recruit at all that was never my vision i thought i saw myself as like i'm gonna learn how to trade that's my i just wanted to trade that was a, that was all that i wanted to do but frankly they were not having that they did not like that i was only trying to trade <laughs> of course the lessons themselves of what the service was offering. You know, I'm a little mixed hearted on the actual substance of what the lessons were, like what you were actually paying for. So you would get a bunch of different products based off of the service that you chose. So I was in Forex trading, so I was doing like day trading, like stops and puts. And I was choosing, again, the fast money kind of services. So it was daily trading like a, a minute of trading like gambling it was really gambling but i learned a lot about like the lingo and how that system works and again this is when robin hood was really popping off trading amc or gamestop kind of things this was prime time of people just being curious of like where do i put my money how do i invest how do i make a million dollars from trading the right move so the services did offer like live trading with these gurus who apparently were making a ton of money from trading, a lot of tools that were supposed to help you, 
chart the maps to know when the best moves are. I don't know how legit all that was. Right, how is it possible that you can make money without even knowing what you're doing? Look at this, Awanda. What the hell is Awanda? Are you the sister of Amanda? What is head, shoulders, knees, are? head, shoulders, knees, are, toes, and knees? Are? What is head and shoulders? And the money that I was trading, I lost what I made, if that makes sense. So I didn't really make any money from trading. I was just losing money from paying every month for this service because I wasn't making enough to cover it. But that was a common story for everybody. I don't know, often the average person is losing money from trading because it's gambling. The house always wins if you don't know the system. And some people are really good at trading. You can go on YouTube and find people who really know how to read the market, when to get in, when to get out. It's a tricky business, but it there's a code you can crack, but not everyone can crack it. It's really not that kind of industry. But it's interesting, like those trades, you'd have thousands of people trading with you and you'd really feel like you're doing something. Meanwhile, I'm over here telling my family, you know, I'm just doing this little trading thing right now. I'm making some money over here. Mind you, I'm like being brainwashed into putting all my money into trading and to this company, to this group, investing my time. Like I'm telling you, this was a daily ritual where I'm trading daily, I'm tracking all this stuff. I'm studying trading. Every week someone would give you a call, a coach. I'm over here thinking, oh, they actually care about how where my stock is and how I'm doing, how my trades are going and where well, how much money I'm making. But their mindset is like, are you recruiting yet? Uh, are you recruiting? How many people you recruited? Who did you reach out to today? How many calls did you make? That's the kind of mindset they're in because they're trying to make their own money. It's a pyramid scheme. They're trying to make their own money. It's a cult. Right, because most jobs are not gonna pay you six, seven figures off the bat. You gotta work your way up the ladder, right? You gotta work your way up, you gotta kiss ass on the way up. And you know what, I was I was making close to six figures. But let's get into the heat of when this really popped off for me. These people convinced me to pack my stuff up, travel to Houston, Texas, in a, it was two bedroom Airbnb with 20 people, and spend a whole weekend just dead set in, in trading and spending money on tickets, on clothes, because you had to look a certain part, right? So I'm dressed up thinking we about to do something, that we a team, this is a family, we're a fam, I'm hugging these people. I'm over here feeling like this is gonna last forever. This is legit, and I have photos of me looking cringe. <laughs> I looked so cringe and I and back then I thought I looked like the hot stuff. I don't know what I was thinking of. In my mind back then I was like, ooh, I'm getting it. You know, I thought <laughs> I thought we were about to be on top of it because I tell you, when you walk into the convention, so you'd pay the money for the ticket, I don't remember how much it was. I'm sure it was a couple hundred dollars. You, I'm flying myself out. I'm paying for the um, part of the Airbnb. I'm paying for the food. I'm paying for the... I took time off of work. I took time off of work to go to this convention. And I know a lot of people who quit their job to be doing this stuff. Like, wild. I don't know how much money they were making. I, I wouldn't. I, I'm glad I didn't quit my job for this. <laughs> Imagine. So I took out some time to work. I fly down to Houston. I have a friend who lives in Houston. So in my mind, I was thinking, okay, this is gonna be a little girl's trip, partly. And then I'm also gonna bond with my family and we're gonna study trading. So that's what I thought. But when I say this is a cult, they did not want me to leave. <laughs> they were like, you're not leaving the house all weekend. You're going to the convention. You're staying with us and you're coming back to the Airbnb so we can trade and study together. That's what their mind was. But I'm like, I didn't, I can't get a, a couple hours to go hang out with my friend and get some food or something. I had to sneak out of the house to go see my friend. Like that's how bad it was. In the time I was in Houston, they wouldn't even let me say the word pyramid. That like people would look at me sideways and be like, why are you? What do you do? Like, you can't say that. You, we don't say that here. Like, it was like a huge taboo. And I was like, mm. it should have been a red flag, right? But in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll behave. Like, I was, <laughs> I was just trying to 
fit in, I guess. I like, really, I was out of it. But when I tell you at these conventions, huge, tens, thousands of people from all around the world. Hey, we're at Hayam Convention 2024. I'm telling you, Japan, Italy, Greece, Mexico, like all over the world, people were here at this one convention in Houston, of all places, with like, it felt like a concert, like the lights and the, the outfits and the bouginess. Like you saw people wearing Gucci, like decked out with their whole team. And like the image and the lifestyle was such a huge part of this. And this is where I can get into how shady this business can actually be like the lifestyle right so it takes off a lot of like urban culture which was trying to attract like it attract a lot of young minorities and pulling in vulnerable people who don't have much thinking that they're going to be in that same spot forcing them to grind and do some shady scam business and that's how toxic that's the top the biggest toxic part to me but again the huge spectacle of the teams i met a lot of people who were making like um we had one of the highest sellers come to our airbnb and kind of tell us about their lifestyle how they got to where they are how they started off with nothing being homeless and they grinded so hard that now they're making six figures just, like lavish lives and i even took selfies with them i was looking up to these people i was like oh my god this could be me one day and it's like everyone's thinking like okay this is gonna be me and then, like you you're with your teams and each team like coordinates with each other um but it was definitely given like Wolf of Wall Street vibes. Mm, like, <laughs> I was doing this in 2021. Like, COVID just slowed down a little bit. And I'm over here flying to Houston for these people in crowds of hundreds of thousands of people. For what? For trading? I like, I, I can't believe I did that. I, maybe I got COVID after. I'd be surprised if I didn't get COVID after because that, mm mm. Also, to end what happened at Houston, I didn't even explain how I got out of this, but after we left the convention in Houston, I was still in that group for about another month. And then I was like, I saw the red flags. The moment they were very adamant about me doing certain things, not letting me go anywhere, not being able to say pyramid. Like I was like, I gotta get out of here. And it was draining in many other ways and taking a lot of time out of my life. So I decided to leave. I finally broke the the nodge in my head. And I tell you, like when I was leaving Houston, I was hugging these ladies, almost crying, being like, we're gonna make it. We're gonna be the successful group. That's the camaraderie of what those conventions do, right? They really rally, rally up those feelings of of success and glamor and, and, and money. And it's like, oh, wow. It's just very stimulating when you're there. So yeah, the success of those conventions, I, I swear probably is what that is. Um, yeah, but I decided to leave. So technically I was in the Forex trading group for about six months. And if you add up the money that I was paying, cause I didn't recruit nobody. I didn't recruit nobody those six months. So I was paying a pretty penny to be in this group. And I didn't make any money. I didn't make any money from trading. So in my eyes, I would say it was a scam. It was a loss. It did not work for me. And I doubt it worked for majority of people. It is not a good business to be in. But like they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? So where are they now? Where Where is this whole thing now? What's going on? Like I still to this day follow some of my team members on social media accounts. And let me tell you, we're all living regular lives. We're all just, trying to mind our own business, trying to do our, our thing. And that makes sense because there is no way that something like this is gonna be sustainable. Again, fast money, as fast as it gets in your hands, the, it can slip out just as fast. You really wanna make sure that you're focusing on building something sustainable. That's where I am right now. That's where a lot of the people that I was family with, like we're all just trying to live our lives. Frankly, I don't know, maybe they're in another crypto forex trading something maybe but if they haven't learned a lesson from this i'm a little worried for them i'm uh, i'm just gonna say that
But like I mentioned again, I Am Academy is still kicking. They're still out there. Pretty sure they're not as big, but it is accused of being a pyramid scheme and has faced legal action. There has been a multitude of legal cases going to the business and then even Terry himself because this man is shady. <laughs> and rightfully so, people feel like they're getting ripped off. Frankly, I think this is an illegal structure to have a pyramid scheme. Like, you're not even supposed to be doing that. And I, and I think they have a loophole of some sort with the recruiting process. Recruiting when it's literally, you're just, you're bringing people into a pyramid scheme. Like, like, come on, let's be honest here. And with the definition of a pyramid scheme being a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever increasing number of investors, quote unquote, the initial promoters recruit investors who, who in turn recruit more investors and so on. The scheme is called a pyramid because each level of the number of investors increases. You got all the people at the bottom recruiting and making you money. Obviously, that's what it is. And the fact that they were trying to hide it the whole time and act all weird and shady around it proves more of a point that it is. People still to this day are still being affected by this organization and they're not really being accounted for. They're still out doing their thing and pretending that they're not a pyramid scheme. Even though if you look up on YouTube, you'll see a ton of people complain about I Am Academy and how much it is a scam. And it is a cult. There's people who stop talking to their family. There's people who quit their jobs. There's people who dedicate their whole time, their life into this program. And that makes it even more toxic. And the Academy doesn't care. They encourage you to do the most and in hopes that you'll be one of those top earning figures. Again, it's abusing the most vulnerable people of society. Like people who are trying to escape poverty, who are trying to do better for themselves, who are just trying to survive out here. To promise something that isn't realistic is ludicrous and a ripoff. I'm gonna end this all by saying, just be cautious of these fast money type promotions because nine times out of 10, it is a scam, it's a lie. Sometimes you just gotta do the slow grind, right? Slow wins the race. We all know the story of the tortoise and the hare. Take your time with it. We don't all need to be speeding to become this mega millionaire, okay? Like, can we just live some casual lives? I know we're all trying to escape the nine to five and create something for ourselves. We look around on social media and we see these glamorized lifestyles and we get FOMO. I get, I get it, we all get it. We feel like, oh, they're out here living their best life. You look at it and you're like, why am I, why are they younger than me making so much more money? Like, what am I doing wrong? So then we reach for these like quick fixes and in turn, it can backlash on us, right? And I share this story to be vulnerable with you guys and be like, <laughs> we all fall for, I fall for it. I was legit in some money scam, some like cult mindset. Anything worthwhile will take time for sure. This is a lesson that obviously I am learning <laughs> and had to learn the hard way. So you don't have to. Leave a comment or a like down below if you have fallen for a scam or gotten close to it. I'd love to hear anyone else's story so I don't feel like I'm alone in <laughs> my crazy financial decisions. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was entertaining for you in some way. I hope you have a really great day or night. It's nighttime. Um, and I'll see you till next time. Bye.